All right, you're here for part two. This is the VWAP scalping strategy, part two. Part one is the video previous, check that out. I can post it up here if you like, or I can put it in the description below. Let's do that. Description below, you can watch part one, but stay with me. Let's watch this one first. I'm gonna walk you through the second candlestick pattern that you can apply to this VWAP trading strategy where you're primarily looking for reversals from the top to go short and from the bottom to go long. So let's just jump into things. Right here you can see I've got my charts up. I'm on Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim platform, and I've got a gem for you. I've got a doozy for you today. I'm gonna to come over here to studies. Watch how I do this. Edit studies. Now, this little box here. Just type in VWAP. See that right there? Double click that, it'll pop it over here. Then you wanna double click it, make sure you're showing it, apply it, and there it is. So. As you may remember, in the last video, if you saw it, if not, I'll go through it real quick. This top band is 75% of the volume weighted average price. The bottom band, that's 25% of the volume weighted average price. The middle is the actual weighted price. So what we wanna look for is a push up or push down with a reversal sign. Now, in the last video, we talked about bearish engulfing candles. That was part one of the series. I promised you all three parts. This is part two. This part is gonna rely on pin bar dojis. You'll hear some people call them dragonfly dojis or shooting star dojis. I think some people call them gravestone dojis. They all depend on if you're going long or short. For simplicity, let's just call them all pin bar dojis and all pin bar dojis. So what that means is you just have a long, long wick with a little baby body, whether it's long or short. And I've got one for you right here and I think it's perfect and I'm gonna explain and break down this trading strategy. So what you wanna look for, this is gonna be a little review from the last video, but you're looking for a candlestick that pierces the upper, meaning this band, or the lower band and then closes on the other side of that line. Once you have that, you then can say, aha, I've got one. Now I need to wait and see if I get the candlestick formation. If you get the candlestick formation, then you just enter, you're done. So we're gonna look at that here. So right here, I'm gonna zoom in on it. You can see that beyond meat, ticker BYND, if you type that in and you go to November 24th, wishes today and you see this candle right here it comes in it's a two minute candle the reason I'm using two minute charts is just because you can get a lot of price action moving but it's not as fast as the one minute not as slow as the five minute it's just a nice place for a scalping strategy for most people so right here you can see this candle pushes up and look what it does it closes it pierces this upper band and it closes above so that triggers me into saying, okay, now all I wanna do is watch the next candle and see what it does. If it forms the right candlestick pattern, then I'm gonna to look to get short because we're looking for reversals from above down. If this would have pushed down and pierced the lower band, I'd be looking for that pin bar doji to form the other direction, looking for a long play to go to the upside. So right here, we got the break. It closed. Let's see where it closed. 144.66. Okay, that's where it closed. Next candle opens. You would have seen this candle push all the way up here. It would have been a big old green candle, and you might be thinking, okay, we're just going to continue on, just going to have some continuation. If that would have finished that way, if it would have closed up here, you would still have a candle that is piercing and closing above this upper band. So you then watch the next candle. Luckily we didn't have to because look what we got. A beautiful pin bar doji, little wick on the bottom. You can have a little wick on the bottom, maybe not have one. The key is just to have a really tall topping tail or a really tall bottoming tail with a small body. Once you get this formation and you're almost ready to close, what I do is I look for the low of this candle, which is 144.41. And what I would do is look to place an order to get short, probably anywhere from two to five cents below that. So let's call it, let's get short at 144.35. 
So this opens, pushes up a little bit, drops down, hits 144.35, triggers you in. Then you would take this thing to the short side. And you might be saying to yourself, well, where do I get out? Where is my stop loss? How does this all work? So let's break that down. What I recommended in the last video, and I'm going to continue to bring that into this video, into part two of the series, is always look at the range of this candle. And I'm going to get out my little calculator here so that I can show you exactly how I'm doing this. So the range on this candle, if you look right here, is $1.48. Okay? So let's say $1.48, type that in, multiply that by however many R's are your target. Now an R is a risk unit. Risk unit is what you're risking on the trade if you lose. So given that this range is $1.48, that's what I recommend making your risk. So let's say you want to risk $100. Take $100 right here, divide that by your R unit, okay? So divide that by the range of this candle, $1.48. That leaves you with 67, can you see that? 0.56. That's how many shares that you want to buy. Take your amount you want to risk, $100, divide it by the range of this candle, which is going to be your stop loss. Tells you to buy 67, almost 68 shares. So I would get short with 68 shares below, this, below the low of this candle, nickel below, at 144.35. Now, what you gotta be asking yourself is, do I wanna go, how many multiples of my risk unit do I want to go before I take profit? So my initial goal is to say, let's go two times, okay? So let's take $1.48, multiply it by two, you get $2.96. Let's just call it $3, okay? So we need a $3 move in order to hit our 2R target. So if we got short at 144.35, I'm going to type that in here, and I'm just going to subtract $3 from that. So 141.35 is where a price action needs to go in order to trigger us out at a 2R profit and finish the trade. Now you want to use a bracket order when taking this entry, when doing this type of trading. And I recommend bracket orders for any type of trading, any day trading at all. And if you don't know how to place a bracket order, well, click this link here and you can check it out. I'll even link it below for you. Um, so 141.35, let's find out where that is. Let's come over here. 141.35 would be right here. Let's draw that in. Right there. So if price action gets to that white line, You've hit your 2R target, and the trade's done. You're out. And look what happens. Drops. Your stop loss is right up here. It drops, bounces, drops, bounces, drops, and pushes right through that line, giving you your 2R pro profit. Now, you could risk $100. You could risk $500. Let's do that. So take $500 right here on your calculator, and what would you divide that by? You're gonna divide that by what number? The range of this candle. Your risk, divided by $1.48. That means you would have to buy 338 shares, okay? 338 shares going short would give you $500 risk. If you went two R's, that means that you would have hit this point and you would have made a thousand dollar profit, risking five hundred dollars. So that's really all this is, is finding a consistent entry and then overlaying on top of that a trade plan that has consistency. That is king. You have to have consistent R's because now let's say tomorrow I have a losing trade and I lose one R. That's okay. Win 2R, lose 1R. Win 2R, lose 1R. I'll take that all day long. That's what I do every morning. I place my trade. If I win, great. If I lose, great. At the end of the month, how many total net R's did I accumulate? That's the key. How many did you accumulate? So with that in mind, you have to have it spread out and, and place 
perfectly, consistently, day after day. So if you wanna do one R profit, great. Some people do 1.5 R's. Some people do two, two and a half, three. I've been doing an experiment with two and a half R's. So it just depends on whatever you wanna do. And the way you find that out is by back testing, like we just did. This is technically a back test. This, this price action, it already happened. So we're just looking at it, breaking it down after the fact. And we know that this trade would have worked. We could put that on our spreadsheet and say, yes, it worked. It went to 1R, it went to 1.5, it hit 2R, it hit 2.5R. You could see if it hit 3 or 4 or 5R, whatever you want. And then after you back test 50 to 100 times, you'll have real hard statistics. And that way you'll know, is this a legitimate strategy to make you revenue day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, whatever. So be aware of that. Trading plan on top of consistent entry. Everything you do, think to yourself, am I being consistent? If you're not, you need to stop and definitely not be risking money in the live markets and figure out how you can be consistent in whatever it is you're trying to do. Once you have something back tested and you're ready to go live, I recommend risk 10 bucks, okay? So how would you do that? Well, you'd take, you'd take $10 and you'd divide it by $1.48. So on this one, you would buy 6.75 shares, call it seven shares. You'd be risking about $10. And there's no issue with this because there are no more commissions on TD Ameritrade. So you could trade one share, two shares, whatever you want. After you start logging 50, 60, 80, 100 trades and you have even more statistics, then you can up your size maybe to $20 or $25 and just keep growing that way and that's how I did it. Currently my risk level is up to $250 on each trade and starting December 1st, I'm gonna be risking $300 a trade. I'm upping it by $50 as long as I keep accumulating a large number of trades that are showing a consistent win percentage that will make me money with my current trade plan. Everything has to be consistent. Very fine tuning of those knobs. You don't wanna spin one knob a lot and see what happens. Very fine incremental adjustments will help keep you green year after year. Hope that helps. Drop questions below. We'll see you next time. <music>